Online dating is garbage, especially if you're an Asian guy on these dating apps in a Western world. Let me explain. So you're swiping through these apps, you'd get no matches, you get one, that person is a really bad conversation, they don't start anything, nothing happens, and they, they unmatch you and they disappear. And then you start to have self-doubts about your own confidence and your own self-worth. You're like, is there something wrong with me? Why aren't I getting any matches? And then you realize, wait, it is an algorithm. People want to stay on this app. They want to make you stay on this app and pay money for it. And then you yourself start to feel unwanted and not really validated, which is why online dating apps can destroy your self-confidence. And you need to realize on some stupid app, just because someone matches with you, it does not mean you are a worthless human being. But that's what we all say, whether that's consciously or subconsciously. And that is why. And honestly, bro, like I have a whole channel dedicated to online dating and I hate to say this, but it's like ruining dating. Yeah. Because it's basically showing women that like the most perfect guy for you could be lined up, but there's 99 plus guys waiting in line that you could quickly replace if he doesn't check one box onto the next one. Mm -hmm. So it's creating like a very picky environment. And then for guys, it's basically saying like, hey, you'll never find love or a partner whatsoever unless you pay us $20.99 a month. First and foremost, men outnumber women. There are excessive numbers of men using online dating apps. There is a bias in the system that works against men. But when you consider who exactly these pairings are destined for, things get even worse. That's why I'm going to use this illustration to stress how unfair these online dating services are. We know now that the ratio of males to females is 3 to 1. Therefore, there are only 50 women to 150 men. That's why the sexiest men are at the top and the ugliest at the bottom. Actually, there is a shocking 60% of all matches going to the top 10% of men. So far, things are looking good if you're a guy at the top. In fact, you're up to a two-fold advantage. Basically, for every guy on this level, there are two women actively pursuing him. For the remaining 90% of males, we will now proceed to the lower levels. The top 20% of men, or 1 in 5, account for 18% of the dates. This may still sound good to you, but things are extremely bad right now. The ratio of males to females is 3 to 2 at this level. To put it another way, even if you're in the top 20% of guys, you're still not in the best position. And to add insult to injury, this is a level of competition that most men can't even imagine playing in. The quality and variety of the available options are sorely lacking. Once the top 10% have made their selections, you're left with mediocre alternatives. So let's dissect this thing even more. If you place yourself between 20% and 50%, most men, whether accurately or inaccurately, place themselves in this category and derive a sense of self-worth as a result. However, even if you belong to this group, you won't find much success in the online dating world because you'll be competing with everyone else in your niche for the bottom 15% of available matches. Overachieving males face a female opponent ratio of 6 to 1. Let's check out the bottom half of the population now, or as I prefer to refer to it, the gray area. Included in this category is any man who is below average in every way. There is a shocking 30 to 1 ratio of men to women vying for the remaining 5% of matches. So if you find yourself in this group, you may think there has been an error in displaying your profile. The first reason should be enough to convince you that using a dating app is a bad idea, but I'll give you four more just in case. Quality, number two, is pitiful. Look fellas, if you thought the quantity of matches was awful, you haven't seen anything yet. Online dating tends to pair people with the worst of the worst in these areas. To begin with something undamaged, I can promise you that the women you meet through dating apps are on average, less desirable than the high-quality women you would meet in person because they are more entitled, promiscuous, and of lower quality. So just what are they doing on dating apps? Do they not have any eligible, successful men in their immediate social circle? And don't be surprised if you find many single moms using the app who are looking for financial support for their kids. About three out of four profiles on Tinder are either extremely overweight, heavily airbrushed, or otherwise unrecognizable due to the use of excessive filters. Floors are not visible because the pictures were taken at an angle. This is why, even if you do manage to match with a woman and beat the absurd odds of actually going on a date with her, there is a good chance that she will be much less attractive in person than she appears in her profile pictures. A woman in her 20s or 30s is more likely to use photos from when she was 3 to 6 years younger than she is now if you two happen to be a match on a dating site. The same holds true here. When you finally get to meet her in person, you'll discover that she's not nearly as stunning as she made herself out to be online. 
Number 3. The Algorithmic Scam How these apps covertly obtain private information to steal your money. For the uninitiated, Tinder uses an algorithm. You'll see your profile card shuffle differently depending on where this falls. Keep in mind that your profile is not displayed at will. It follows a strict hierarchy among the profiles of the other guys. Since there are profiles that are always displayed first and profiles that are always displayed last, what factors contributed to the order in which your profile was displayed? No matter how many people like your profile, the algorithm will never show it to potential matches if women aren't swiping right on you. And secondly, your own personal swipe frequency. Don't be a desperate swipper. The algorithm punishes it. You can't actually get permanently banned from the service by doing this though. Your profile will just go in at hiding. The two primary causes of these, you'll have to find out about a few others that aren't as crucial on your own time. If your profile is lacking in either of these areas, it will be pushed down to the very bottom of the list. Then why is this a fraud? These dating apps, however, don't tell you where your profile stands in the rankings or if it's been shadow banned, which means it's been made invisible permanently. Since your profile has been hidden, purchasing a premium package like Boosts or Platinum will not make any difference. Paying for Boosts won't improve your match rate if you're already getting no responses. Fourthly, looks is everything when it comes to online dating apps, and I mean everything. Keep in mind that nothing else really matters. Simply put, biographies are irrelevant. It has been proven that bios do not increase your chances significantly. Even your bio, which is supposed to be all about your personality, still points back to your looks, and these things are now just becoming way too predictable. The only time your bio has any relevance is when it also has to do with your looks. The number one thing a guy can put in his bio that increases his chances is the term six foot. Number five, the entitlement switch. It seems that in today's dating scene when women use online dating apps, their standards from the real world suddenly increase by a factor of 10. Women seem to lower their standards to chat only as soon as they log into Tinder. The reality of online dating is laid bare below. 90% of women say they wouldn't swipe left if they were men. In contrast, 90% of men would swipe right on themselves if they were a woman. I've seen it all guys, fat women who will never like a fat man on Tinder. Women of a certain height wouldn't consider tapping like on a man of that height, and the reverse for women of a certain race. As a result of using dating apps, women have even higher expectations of men than before. Expect women's expectations to be 10 times higher on online dating apps than they are in real life. That's all for today's episode on Circle of Kings. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. It motivates me to create more content for you. See you next time. Cheers.